Today on how to wreck your car with one easy move, I tear into the workings of a machine I have no clue how to put back together again. Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving. I'm back in the barn. Going to try and make an attempt today to do the impossible to fix an automatic gearbox on this here Freelander Hippo. Right, so last time we saw this car, it was just after doing our camping expedition and the thing, which was huge fun. Really enjoyed staying in the tent, but it hasn't moved at all since then because it's been up here with a broken gearbox. It was flashing the error code on the dashboard. We plugged in the um, the P scan, which then identified a thing called the 24 duty code uh, cycle solenoid, which is one of these, was defective. Um, so today I'm going to try and get this car safely in the air. You'll notice we have got safety jacking equipment down there from Draper and get this thing up in the air, get the oil pan off the bottom of the gearbox, locate that solenoid, replace the solenoid, put the oil pan back on again and then put oil back in the gearbox. So hopefully it's all going to go fine and also all got to do it before school king out time because I'm on picking up duty. You'll notice I have actually got a new addition to the, the workshop in the form of a clock. Uh, Mercedes branded from the uh, main dealership because I was down at the main dealer picking up wiper blades for my everyday car because you can't buy the correct ones from um, just Halfords and the rest. You've got to go and buy them from a main dealer. The clock, which has got a thermometer and all kinds of other stuff on it, was 20 quid as opposed to 40 quid for the wiper blades. It seemed like an amazing deal, frankly, and it means I can actually keep track on how far behind I am when I'm doing these things. And also, I can keep an eye on when Popmaster's about to start, which is imminent. Now, the first thing we're going to do, I've already checked on the, on the P-Scan. Oh, I'll show you what the P-Scan looks like in case you've not seen it before. P-Scan is a tiny black box in here. Got a Raspberry Pi and a lot of cables just there. That has identified the fault. I will confirm the fault by locating a connector block under the bonnet and that will uh, check the homage on, on what they're doing just before I start emptying oil out of the thing, just to make sure we're doing the right stuff and then get draining. Okay, so this thing is now well supported on these three ton draper axle stands on the chassis rails, so we should be fine to get underneath here. Now the previous owner but one uh, did some under sealing on the uh, structural parts, but uh, not the floor middle bit. So I will have to go and uh, just top that up at some point in the not too distant future. But having a look at this, I know he did the oil change in the gearbox. I've seen a video when he did it. He pointed out that we're missing all the screws. We've got no screws there, cable tie there, one 10 mil bolt there, and a pair of very well welded in screws down here, which are gonna take a little bit of um, effort to undo. So first things first, let's get these out. That's almost out, I'll leave it hanging on there. I won't snip the cable tie just yet. First of all, let's battle with these things, which I'm sure are not going to come undone easily. Oh, that one's uh, is coming undone easily, thank goodness. I thought this was going to be an absolute fight, but I did um, soak these in, in uh, Bulldog whilst I was listening to Popmaster. Wow, even that one. Thank you, Bulldog. All right, so goodbye to the uh, hard-working cable tie that's been doing its job down here. This one can come undone. And then that tray should plop off. Yuck. Why is it not plopping off? I'm sure there'll be people in the comments shouting, saying, oh, you've not done such and such, but as far as I'm aware, that's everything released. Mm. I can't even get the under tray off. What hope have I got for getting the gearbox apart? Oh, I know where I went wrong. There are two more either side on the outer edges, which I hadn't realized were part of this the same um, component. Well, that's dusty. The advantage of wearing glasses is you do have built-in safety goggles. A lot of dust falling out of there, yuck. I hope it's all going together okay. Already missing this side. Go on, undo your bugger. Let's get the bigger one. Right, I've gone for the bigger one for the more stubborn of the two nuts. 13 mil in place again. There we go. Off, free, and what do you know? The tr under tray started moving immediately. Right, 
still can't make the undertrain move, which is a basic failing at the beginning. But looking at this, this is a huge chunk of metal around the edge, and there's two bolts down there, which look like they need to be undone as well. Which looks like all these bad boys are just here. So I'm missing one there, that one's still in place. And likewise, missing one just there, and one just there. But I can't, obviously, get the uh, impact in there because it's the wrong shape. I can get some bulldog on it though. So I can attack it with a spanner. So this is inaccessible at the best of times, but worse because of the blooming goat tray underneath it. So it's just one of those things you've got to wrench as hard as you can. Thanks Land Rover for making this one really easy to get to. So naturally the camera didn't catch the moment when I undid the last bolt and this thing fell on me. Because it's quite big it turns out. So there we go, that is the entire under tray which has had a hole cut in it. I saw in the video of the oil change on the gearbox, someone had cut a hole in it to make it easier to do the uh, gearbox oil change at some point in the past, which I guess is good because it's had a gearbox oil change more than once. Let's have a look under here at the engine. Right, so. This is the tray we need to be taking off just here. And there's 21 or 24 of these small, I think in say seven or 10, 10 millimeter bolts that need to be done up to seven Newton meters once we've drained the oil out of the gearbox through there, 24 millimeter socket on that one. How hard can it be? Before I do that though, I do want to find that wire, big drum connector so I can do a test of all the connections. Taking it out, it's all starting to make a bit of sense. I don't know what you're gonna be able to see here, but the drum cables I need to be looking at the connectors of are just down there. And I saw the filler a second ago. That just there is the top of that drain pan I was looking at. And you probably can't see it in this shot, but there is the, the rubber bung filler for this oil for the gearbox as well. So I need to go and get a length of rubber hose to direct it down there and a funnel. Right, but what I'm gonna do first of all is take the battery out. I was gonna disconnect it anyway, but I'm gonna take the battery out completely and the battery tray to give myself a bit more room. Three is held in place with cable ties because the battery tray has got a broken clamp on it. I do have a new battery tray from the Freelander. I stripped a bunch of parts from uh, a little while ago when I first got the car to get all the window regulators and stuff. So this will be an opportunity to actually refit, well not refit, actually fit that in there properly because that is not being held down as it should be. Oops. All right, I see a bolt down there. How else is this clamped down? One in there, okay. Feels good. Is that turning or not turning? It am not turning. That was little. The deep down one is, the far away one. That one's turning, that one's not. All right, so that one's out. Excellent, I'll leave it in it so don't lose it. There we go, so this is really rusted in. It was slightly rounded off. It's for 13, but what I've had to do is hammer a 12 on there and douse it in uh, release oil so we can free this one off. I knew there was a reason I hadn't gotten around to changing the, uh, the battery tray before when I did everything else. And this is it. I'll give it all a clean up inside there as well because it's pretty minging. That's one more. It's always one more. One more thing, sorry, one more thing. If ever you're unsure about how good a bolt is, start it by hand, rather than with the tool. That's two of them, okay. This battery is really not going anywhere. There's literally always something. I've just undone the plastic clamp that holds this uh, big cable harness to the back of the tray and just found another little one here which you undo by squeezing the back of it and pushing it through there but that's a two-handed job so I'm gonna have to put the camera down. There you can see why it's cable tied in. This one, this bracket is snapped off just there. This is the complete battery bracket that will hold it in place. Unfortunately, it is kind of a captive nut situation. It would not undo. I thought it was a captive nut because it wouldn't undo. Anyway, I'll change the entire tray. I believe it's some kind of captive nut because this one 
wouldn't undo from there. I think it goes back together again. I will give us a good clean up and maybe put some silver, I don't know, hammerite or some other kind of rust preventative paint on there. Is that a cavity into the chassis rail as well? Fill that with wax too. Right, but now we've got access to those drums. All right, so here is the cable that goes down to the gearbox and its internal solenoids that unscrews one drum into the other. And there we have our pins, what we need to test. Let's go and get the ohm ometer. Right, using the information from uh, Discount MG Road Supplies website, you need to touch pins 16 and 18, which are these two down here. And I should get a result, but I'm not. So basically I'm getting nothing off that sensor on the ohms, so I'll plug this back in and can carry on with what I thought was the problem. This is where things start getting messy. So I'm going to go in with a 24 millimeter bolt and there's only one of these, so it can only be this one. But this oil is only a year old. It was changed just before I bought the car. So it shouldn't be too gross. It'd be interesting to see what color it actually is. It should look like cherry aid. But in fact, this is not far off, only a little bit murky. It's a shame to be throwing it away, but I'm not going to put used oil back in again. So now while that's continuing to drain down, I'm going to go through and undo all of these 20 something 10 millimeter bolts, only seven Newton meters tight, so barely much more than finger tight. And it's been much easier to do with not holding that, but basically go around the pan, do all of them, and off it comes. If this is a KV6 engine car, then there is a bit of extra cooling system stuff you have to undo. But I think we're pretty easy on the diesel. I've got the small um, quarter inch set in there as well, because it's kind of hard to reach some of these. So three eighths and a quarter size extension bar, small sockets, a lot of fiddling, and really wishing I wore some gloves. So these are becoming increasingly inaccessible because I'm now past or reaching the point where the ratchet is no longer ratcheting it needs to be finger done and I can't get fingers in there most of them aren't too bad to get to but there are a number which are going to be really hard so I'm just enjoying the low hanging fruit right now enjoy it while it lasts all in the magnetic tray so I don't lose them all the tools I'm using on here are in the Amazon affiliate link in the description below. I'm using Draper stuff because it's a good price and it works well. And believe it or not, buying stuff from the Amazon affiliate link does help to support the channel. Yeah, you do need various sizes of socket driver and length of extension bar because of all the different inaccessible areas, making it so much fun. Oh, I knew one would go in there. I will come back to searching for that later on when I drain it. But that bracket there, I think is going to have, oh, the cooler bracket's going to have to move. Okay, I thought it was only on the KV6, but I guess I have to move that bracket as well. Just held in by a 10 millimeter. That's handy. A couple of these with this bracket just pushed aside slightly, I can get a spanner on too. Just can't turn it. Really wish I brought some ratcheting spanners up with me. I've got everything out apart from, I don't know if you can see them or not, the last four bolts up here hidden behind this oil cooler, which has got a pair of 15 millimeter bolts, which are quite inaccessible and very, very tight. Uh, so I've soaked them in Bulldog and I need an extension bar to try and turn my uh, ratchet a little bit harder. So I'm going to have to just leave that for a bit while that soaks in and go home and get a longer breaker bar because not all my tools are over here in the barn. So we've done pretty well, got this far. Just those last four which are concealed up there, proving tricky. Right, nearly there. Okay, so we're back again the next day. I ran out of time because I'm going to do the school run, but uh, left those two bolts on the oil cooler down there, soaking in Bulldog, and I've come back with reinforcements, either an extendy bar or a proper breaker bar to try and get that thing off. The um, PDF 
of the um, instruction manual. So thank you very much indeed to the uh, viewer who sent that over. That was really, really handy. Um, mentioned it's actually taking the oil cooler off completely, but I'm hoping I can avoid doing that and just move it to one side. So I just need to break off that 15 millimeter, pair of 15 millimeter bolts. And then if I can do this one handed, then hopefully we can get this thing free. And uh, this is also large Draper breaker bar available on the Amazon affiliate store. There we go, oh, free, well one's free anyway. That made life easier. Let's try and reach the other one, which is way more inaccessible. Let's see it now. I'll show it to you. It is, well that one's now loose enough to undo with a ratchet. That one there, which is gonna be interesting to get to. It needs to be broken free with the big bar as well. It's on, but I'm not, not gonna have space to turn the thing. If I put a, if you know, even like a half extension bar on it, it's too long to, damn it, get on there. Eventually I managed to get a socket on there uh, by using this shorter bar, so I could actually get that up in there around it, using a step down from the half inch to the three eighths, a quarter length extension bar, because I've got three eighths size of that one, and then a 15 millimeter in three eighths size. And then once that was connected, I was able to put a couple of other breaker extensions onto there, so, it worked. That breaker bar was kind of too long to get into that location, so hopefully now we can free this. Right, please, please come free. Oh, oh God, yeah. There was a moment of movement. Yes, it's moving now. Thank goodness. So now I've got both of those on there. And finally, that last bolt is free. With all the weight on it, it took a lot of finagling, a lot more fiddling around with extension bars and twisty bits. Incidentally, this stuff came from a friend's dad when he had a garage clear up and sort of gave it working on car. So thanks, Mr. C. That's brilliant. Uh, really got me out of a hole there. Now, where's my light gone? If I retrieve my light from inside here somewhere, I can't find the light. I can see where the light's going, can't see where it's coming from. Well, that's weird. Oh, there it is. Right, I can now reach the last four bolts up under here. Those last four shiny silver bolts in the side of here. So if I get my quarter inch 10 mil socket up there, we should just be out to make that happen, probably. This is it, the last one. If I get a medium extension bar to get down below these two pipes, I can get a socket on there. And hopefully then camera will definitely have to go down because it's t totally a two handed job while you lose all the skin on your knuckles. Oh, bumsy. Well, that's awkward. Magnet tool thing, hurrah for the rescue. Not far. Right, so those are all out. All of them are in that little tray just there, apart from the one that's just currently at the bottom of the uh, catch can full of gearbox fluid. Right, so now, that side panel is actually free. It's just held on by the Bondo. So I just need to just loosen that off and I can see my first look inside a Jacko automatic gearbox. Exciting times. There we go, free. And I was expecting quite a lot of mess when this happened, but I think because I've been draining oil for the last... So that's free, but it's not free enough. Oh, I can see the um, thingies. Oh, is it caught on the top? Hold on, bear with. Well, okay, I forgot to start the camera for it, but I just had to take a bracket off the side of the um, this cover because that was, that's how the hose clamps on it were catching every single thing. I can now see the solenoids I need to be working on. Be careful not to force anything because things this has got to go back on easily because I need to smear sealant on the side of this when it all goes back together. There we are, off and done. Just need to make sure that's pulled all out of the way right now. So now I'm going to look at those solenoids at last. 
Okay, there's about nine solenoids here in this gearbox, so finding the right one is a trick. I thought it was one of the top ones, but it's not. What you need to do is go back underneath the car, and there you'll find a couple more down here. And these are the two four solenoids. One is the shift solenoid, one is the duty solenoid. It's the one with the white connector on it. They both share these two bolts, so you need to undo the two bolts. Obviously, don't lose that one or break that one, but then, yeah, that'll be job done. Once I've changed that, well, I say job done. <laughs> Yeah, it's not go there. Right, let's get this doing. Ah! Oh man, I've dropped my light in the gearbox pan. And I didn't bring the um, manual with the torque settings on this, so I won't fully torque this back up when I put it back in again. But I, at least I can get it out though. Put the new one in. Today on how to wreck your car with one easy move. I tear into the workings of a machine. I have no clue how to put back together again. That's a very long bolt. Oh God, I hope this doesn't mean the gearbox is gonna fall in half. It does have to be that bolt though. Also, a very long bolt. So that's the first solenoid, which we're not going to disconnect. This is the solenoid, which we do want to disconnect. And that's now free. I'll test that before I bin it though, just to double check we have replaced the right thing. Nice shiny new one. Roll these things together. That pops in there. Actually, they need to pop in together, don't they? There we go, job done. Clickety clack. Oh, uh, no. I've got a nice clean cardboard on the floor, so when stuff does go down, it's not gonna pick up too much grime and grit. So there we go. That was the actual change of the broken component. And after several hours of battling this stuff, only took a few seconds. Then I'll, uh, before I put the cover back on again, I need to clean all these surfaces off, which is gonna be a real pain because it's really inaccessible. Give a really good clean up to the inside of the drain pan and clean up all the surfaces, the mating surfaces of that. And the really fun bit is gonna be putting sealant on that and getting in there without smearing over the inside workings of the gearbox. That's gonna be the challenge. Quick confirm that this thing is actually dead in here. Um, got my ohmometer back again. Touching them across, I'm getting something through there. Put it on here. I am getting zip. Nothing at all, so this is, like my wife, it's dead inside. Okay, so what I've done is I've cleaned the inside of this as well as possible. I've scraped as much of the uh, old sealant off as possible. A bit trickier on the gearbox side, and I've been in and I've scraped as much of the sealant off the gearbox side as well. The trick now is gonna be putting the cover back on without smearing any sealant into the workings of the gearbox. So what I think I'm gonna do is pop my pills onto the gearbox because the gearbox is staying still and I'm not gonna be smearing it past stuff. Right, let's go and get smeary. If you can imagine this is an awful lot of no fun and quite tricky, you'd be on the right track because it is no fun and quite tricky. Right, so now the fun bit. Pull the uh, cooler back got a nice even smear of sealant all the way around on the gearbox side. Lift this all over here. Get it, oh, come on. Up into there, it's not as easy as it looks and it doesn't even look that easy. I've left me put safety goals behind. There we go. Oh, it's on, that was easy. I spoke too soon. Right, let's get a few bolts in here. Now, because I was struggling to find the right length of socket on the way off, I went and got myself a set of three-eighths deep reach sockets 
for the way back. There we go. Once we've got the first couple in there, that'd be relatively easy, but using the deep socket, so much easier to position it in there. Well, of course, I've got deep sockets at home, just I'm not at home, I'm in the barn. I even got impact sockets at home, but I'm not at home. I'm in the barn. And what I need to do is just go around the entire oops, pan and just tighten these up evenly and then go around and torque them all to seven newton meters. God, I wish I had this one socket when I was taking it apart. It's almost like it was designed for this kind of work. Right, this may take a little while. I will just add on the subject of the instant gasket seal on this. There is no actual gasket, it's just purely instant gasket, as from the manufacturer. You only want a little smear of it, you don't want a lot, because if any gets off the side of this thing and gets into the workings of the gearbox, it will basically ruin the gearbox. So it's a smear, spread it with your finger. It doesn't matter which side of the gearbox you put it onto, whether gearbox or pan, you want to be going as light as possible, just as the minimum amount you can get away with. Where's my bolts gone? Right, so what I've got here now is my torque wrench set to seven newton meters of torque. So I'm gonna go around all these little bolts, which I've already sort of tightened a little bit to seven meter, newton meters, not seven meters. Oh, on. Which isn't very tight, there you go. That's seven. That's seven. Seven. I think that's seven. It's kind of hard to get a click on that angle. Seven. Seven again. This may take some time. Join me later when I'm not doing seven newton meters on 34 different bolts. On the front of it and then re-secure the oil cooler. Just trying to remember which way around that actually went. Um, I think that was like that. No. Hmm. I'll figure it out. Bear with. Done up the two 10 millimeter bolts, one there and one down there. You probably can't see from this camera. I can refit this extra little clip which just pops through there. You can't access that lower bolt with this in place. So you need to take that off in order to do up the bolt. This is another 200 job, sorry. Okay, the only spannering left to do now under here is to refit the three big bolts that hold the oil cooler. Oh, it's almost a shame to use these things, they're so pretty. The thing I've discovered on this job is that aluminium is not great for sticking magnetic tools to. Oh, I thought this takes inaccessible to whole new levels. Full crimin a long enough bar. Job done. Cool. Last one to go. Where did you go? You were down over there with nearly four litres of fluid. But to check you've got the right level, you have to undo the least obvious thing in the world, which is this seven, I think it's a seven millimetre Allen key headed bolt just here. And there is like a flush drain tube that runs down to this point. And when it starts to run out of there, you've got the right amount. Right, because I'm going to do this almost properly. I'm going to give us a bit of a clean up under the under the bottom of this thing before I put it all back together again. Bit of a good old braking clutch. Can't go wrong, make the whole thing look clean and shiny, even if it's going to be covered by. Okay, and that gets tightened back in then using a new crush washer. So we're all now good to go. All right. Okay, now I need to fill up the ATF fluid back into the gearbox. Now, naturally, they could have put a nice drain filler neck that comes up to here somewhere, but they didn't. It's down here, and it's that opening hole you can see right in the middle of the screen in the spot of light right now. So that's not exactly accessible. Fortunately, I was gonna use a funnel, but I've just been lent a really handy tool, like a pressurized liquid pump. So I'll use that thing to squirt fluid in there. Possibly easy. Oops. 
Okay, so now we're all screwed back together. The oil is topped up, the oil ATF fluid is topped up, the cap is back in, I've given it a quick squirt to clean up the little bit of spray that came out at the end. I've not bolted the battery tray down because I want to go back in there in a future video and give it all a nice clean up and some fresh silver paint under there. And I've not put the under tray on in case we've got any issues we need to come back to. But first of all, I'm going to hook up the Pi scan, so not temperature the engines run to. Then we're going to run it up and run it through the gears to make sure it's all working. Okay, so I've got my P-Scan hooked up here. It's in park, forcing up. I need to let the thing run up to temperature. Okay, so I've gone into the error screen on the Jack Co transmission and it's showing. Oops, read error codes, zero code. So looks all good. Let's get into live data and find ourselves transmission fluid temperature, second item, 15 and a half degrees. So I'll give it another five minutes and we can go and then start running this through the gears. Okay, so right, we're up to temperature. So now what we do is just cycle through the gears, each gear for about 10 seconds, just so it can move the fluid through all the different areas. See on the dashboard. Going through all of them, excellent. And on the P scan, no error codes. Excellent. Let's take a quick run around the, the formula just to make sure it's all right, and then I'm going to call this done. Right, let's take this thing around the farmyard just to make sure it's all working all right. There's one thing I forgot is it will reset the uh, rear window. So I'm going one up and down a couple of times just to reset it. All the way to the top and the way to the bottom as I remember. Bingo bango, this is really good. I tell you what, this actually feels more sprightly as well than it ever has before. I wonder if it has always been just doing something a bit squishily not quite right. I'm going to call this a job well done. If I keep a look out around here, I might even find what happened to that um, missing spark plug from the Mini, which is somewhere on the spot on the farmyard I expect as well. So that is properly, properly exciting. I mean, when I first looked at this job, or when I first started researching it, and the first quote I got was two and a half grand, and I was thinking, oh, that's not good. And the second one was more realistic. It's like six fifty, seven hundred pounds. It's still a bit of a well, basically a £1,500 car, but a car I really quite enjoy, so I didn't want to scrap it for the sake of a gearbox. But thanks to the internet and the all stuff you can research on there, thanks to a couple of viewers who've sent me some really, really helpful information like where to buy the part from £55 for the part, £65 for the gear oil, so I'm into this thing for like £110 plus my time. That is incredible, you know, just a few basic hand tools to get the thing apart as well. So yeah, amazing. I can see how it is a two hour job book time because you know, if you know where everything is, it's not a huge effort. It's just because it took me the best part of two days on and off. In fact, no, three days on and off um, because I didn't know where any of the parts were. I had to work out where every single nut and bolt was. I had to get into the gearbox and then figure out where the solenoid was out of the nine that are in there. But you know, it's done. It's, as, it's an intimidating job to look at, but in reality, it's just big Meccano ultimately. So. I am very pleased to have got this car back on the road. And, and just having just taken it around that little sort of run around the farmyard just to get the feel of the thing again, and make sure there's no error codes. Incredible, it feels so good. It feels better than it ever has in all the time I've owned it. So I wonder if it'll actually be a bit brisker on the road now as well. Before I put it back together properly and refit the uh, under tray and the battery bot tray, I'm gonna get underneath and give it a really good clean up, put some under sealy stuff, silver paint under where the battery tray goes. I'm gonna go to Land Rover and get a new set of nuts and bolts for this, a new bracket as well, because I'm missing a bracket just here. So I'm gonna have to go and find them. I don't wanna put this back on again with um, cable ties and stuff. It's just messy. So I will find a, a new set of nice bolts for that because that's just horrible. And then I'm going to look at getting a winch to hang this tent from the ceiling because it's a bit of a bulky thing. It means I can't go into a lot of low car parks and it's a bit of a theft issue as well. I'm worried that someone might just have it away on their toes with the thing. A couple of determined lads would have that off in no time. So uh, I'm quite keen not to be casting that around. So what I can do is a couple of engine strops and a, and a winch, attach it up to the, uh, the rafters up there. 
undo it, hoik it up there, out of harm's way. When I want to use it, just lower it down, bolt it on again, jobs are good. So yeah, there we go. Right, so thank you so much for watching. I really have quite enjoyed getting this done. It's very satisfying to have a job done and know you've done it yourself and it's actually worked. If this has been helpful, if you're putting one of these cars back together yourself or a Rover 75 or anything else with a Jacko box, then I hope this was very helpful indeed. I might even put like a, a truncated two minute version of it over onto uh, tea break, just as like a how-to guide without the waffle. Um, if you've enjoyed this as entertainment, then please do hit like and subscribe as well. And anyway, I'll be back very soon indeed doing other stuff to other cars. Right, so thank you for watching and join me again next time doing something completely different.